In this video, we'll discuss how to identify various authentication deployment models within your Okta environment. So the first question you may be asking yourself is, what exactly is a deployment model? When we say deployment model, we're simply referring to a means or a pattern of implementing the authentication flow for a particular application. At a high level, there are really two general deployment models, the redirection model and the embedded model. The redirection model is the default out-of-the-box experience to authenticate users for an application. The user is redirected via the user's browser to Okta to authenticate. And then upon successful authentication, the user is redirected back again through the browser to the application that initiated the flow. The key distinction with the redirection model is that the user's browser leaves the application, is redirected to Okta to authenticate, and is then sent back to the application once authentication is complete. With the embedded model, the end user never leaves the application's own UI. Instead, SDKs and APIs are used to broker the authentication flow while the user stays completely within the application's custom UI. For more information about redirection versus embedded authentication, take a look at the link at the bottom of the screen. With regard to the Okta Identity Engine upgrade, there are really three primary use cases that you'll want to pay special attention to in order to ensure that your upgrade goes smoothly. Number one, the redirection model with a customized Okta login page. Number two, an embedded authentication model using client-side code. This would be something like the Okta sign-in widget or the Okta auth JS SDK. And number three, embedded authentication with server-side code. This would be your own custom form using server-side backend APIs to broker the authentication flows like Java, .NET, PHP, Node.js, etc. It's important to note also that within a single Okta tenant, there may be multiple deployment models present. Redirection with a customized Okta hosted login page is easily identifiable within your, your org. Number one, any such customization requires a custom brand with a custom Okta domain to be registered. And number two, if there are any customizations to your Okta hosted login page, you will see an acknowledgement item appear in your OIE upgrade hub. Testing of Okta hosted uh, login page customizations is a fairly straightforward process, and in many cases, no changes will be required to facilitate the upgrade. Now let's take a look at how to identify a customized Okta hosted login page within your environment. The first thing you'll want to check is what URL are you using to log into your Okta environment. If you're using a URL that contains Okta.com or OctaPreview.com, this is the off-the-shelf Okta uh, login page, and there's no ability to, to add any customizations that would be problematic to this particular page. However, if you're using a login URL that contains your own domain as the root domain and not an Okta domain, then this is a custom domain, and there's a possibility that there may be some customizations on this page that could cause issues once you upgrade to OIE. The first thing you'll want to check in that case is your OIE upgrade hub to see if you have any acknowledgement items indicating that there are customizations to your Okta hosted login page. If there are, you can find those by going to customizations and brands and finding any brands that have an associated custom domain associated with it. Uh, for each custom domain, you'll want to check under pages and check for the login page or sign in page configuration and look at the code editor there. Um, you can check your code to see if there are any, uh, any uh, deprecated methods being used within the sign-in widget or if there's any customized CSS scripting or JavaScript within this HTML page that potentially could be problematic. If you do identify anything, testing is a pretty straightforward process. You can simply take this code, copy it, and paste it into a tenant that is on OIE and give it a try. If it works, then you should have no issues. If not, then you can begin debugging a little more in a little more detail. It's also important to note that not every customization to this page is necessarily problematic. Um, and in particular for the acknowledgement item, uh, just because there is an acknowledgement item doesn't mean that something is going to break. Um, any customization at all, even a comment, will cause the acknowledgement item to appear in your OIE upgrade hub. So it's really critical that even if you have something called out in your upgrade hub, you want to test to make sure that everything works or, or doesn't work um, so that you know exactly what 
needs to be done or, or perhaps doesn't need to be done before you upgrade. Embedded authentication using client-side code is also fairly easy to identify within your environment. Number one, if you have an embedded flow that uses the sign-in widget, this will be called out as an acknowledgement item in your OIE Upgrade Hub. Secondly, for both the widget and the JavaScript auth.js flows, cores must be configured within your Okta tenant in order for these to function. Finally, it's important to note that changes may not be necessary for the upgrade if you're running the widget in classic mode. However, classic mode does come with its own set of limitations, so thorough testing is still critical. Now let's take a look at how to identify embedded flows using client-side code within your Okta environment. So the first thing that you'll want to look for is whether or not you have any acknowledgement items called out in your OIE upgrade hub. Specifically, if you have an embedded flow using the Okta sign-in widget, there will be an acknowledgement item indicating that you have an embedded Okta sign-in widget under your OIE upgrade hub. Now, this will not detect the auth.js implementation, so you'll also want to go under security and API and trusted origins and look for every URL that is registered for cores. This is a requirement for any of the client-side uh, authentication flows, whether it's the sign-in widget or the JavaScript auth.js SDK to function. So anything, any URL that you have registered here is a possible implementation for the embedded client-side flow. Finally, identifying embedded authentication flows using server-side code can be quite difficult at times. It may not be possible to identify all server-side implementations with the information that you have available to you as an Okta admin. Because of this, it's critical that you reach out to all of your development teams within your organization to ensure that any teams implementing any sort of custom authentication or recovery flow are aware of the pending upgrade and have a chance to test their code thoroughly prior to upgrading in production. Now let's see how you can look for signs of an embedded authentication flow within your Okta environment. We can look for signs of embedded authentication flows within your Okta environment by looking for clues in the system log. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is to look for the raw user agent values of some of our requests. So we're going to want to create a filter and filter on requests where there is a value present for a raw user agent. And we want to then filter this down a bit more to focus on the specific endpoints that could be problematic. So we want to look for requests that have a request URI that starts with uh, API v1 auth in. These, these are the classic style authentication endpoints. Or requests that start with API v1 sessions. This would be server-side session management type of activity. And finally, requests that contain or that start with API v1 factors. This would be uh, like customized enrollment or uh, unenrollment or challenges via the, the factors API. These are the, the endpoints that potentially could be problematic with the upgrade. Now that builder doesn't allow us a lot of flexibility, so I'm going to go in here and fix this to group these and change this internal uh, pairing to an or instead of an and and then close that grouping before I do my search. And then once I get my results here, I can download this to a CSV file and open it up in a spreadsheet and filter this a little further. And specifically, what we want to look for is that raw user agent field. And what we're gonna look for is any value for the raw user agent that essentially is not a browser. So basically anything that doesn't start with Mozilla, as that's pretty much what every modern browser starts with these days. Uh, so if I look at my, uh, my column here and do a quick filter on that, I can see the values that I have present. I've got several different variations of Mozilla, and then I've got a couple of others here. Now, here I see Postman called out. This is where you're going to be somewhat dependent on your developers and whether they followed best practices. Uh, you may see a, a custom name that they send in the 
in the raw user agent field that identifies the application, or you may see a default value for whatever development platform they're using, like Java or .NET or PHP, et cetera. But anything that's not a common browser user agent is something that you'll want to do a little more investigation on. And to that end, if we take a look at some of the entries here, if, again, if your developers have followed best practices and sent a uh, token, uh, an API token with each of their um, authentication call, or with each of their API calls, including the ones that don't necessarily require it, like the authentication calls, um, then you can uh, take some steps anyway to identify who it is that may be uh, making those calls or, or using those API endpoints. So specifically within your, uh, within your system log, you're gonna wanna look for system and trans, or debug context, or excuse me, system and transaction and the request API token ID. Now this is an actual token ID that you can then copy and look up under your API tokens in the admin log. So if you go to security and API tokens, you can search for that value and see which of these tokens that that represents. In this case, that value is my Postman token. And I can see which admin account, which admin service account is associated with that particular API token. So this is one way, potentially, if your developers have followed best practices, that you can help to identify uh, who it is that's, that's making these embedded calls. Now, again, unfortunately, uh, this is not required on all of the API calls. So if your developers are not following best practice, it's possible that you may, you may not have this information available. At the end of the day, you are somewhat at the mercy of your developers and whether or not they follow best practices as far as whether you'll be able to identify exactly who it is that's, that's making these calls. As such, it's critical that you reach out to all of your development teams uh, to try to identify any and all possible um, API-based integrations that, that may be present in your environment prior to upgrade so that you can make sure you have a full picture of what's present. Now that we've seen how to identify various deployment models within your Okta environment, check out the additional documentation on the OIE Got Customizations page to see what you should do if you find specific deployment models in your environment. We hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching and have a great day.